For some reason, this morning, I woke up thinking of a story my mother told me, of when the circus came to the dale. Elephants walked through the streets, she said. People came from miles around. I didn't believe her. Well, not until I saw the old video of the parade. It took seeing it to make it true. Years later, I told her this over Christmas dinner. She told me she made the story up. I always thought that was funny. People do not like to be meaningful. It makes them uncomfortable. They will repeat at things until they can't remember whether it was true or false. I'm trying to recall every story she told me so that I can decide for myself which ones were honest and which were not. Tilly made things up. And she told me her mother was a filmmaker, that she worked in California and wasn't around a lot. It didn't need to be said. And I knew she'd left Tilly and her father. And I read about the funeral in the newspaper. Tilly had died of hypothermia in a care home. The window hollowed as a storm gathered outside. And there was an endless supply of food spread out on a table. And I'd skipped breakfast, so I piled my plate full. Her father saw me through the crowd of funeral mourners. He'd always been the sort that could not escape his own melancholy, but was ashamed of being unhappy. From his expression, I could tell he was arranging an opinion in his mind. He decided that he was pleased to see me and approached. I wanted to talk about Tilly. He wanted to talk about her mother. So he spoke about the buffet. I'd made my way through the mountain on my plate and felt rather ill. And he asked me if I'd eaten. And I smiled politely and nodded. He always controlled the amount of time that Tilly and I shared. This meant that she shied away from him when he tried to kiss her goodnight. If her father knew what we did when he wasn't in, he would never have let us leave his sight. The first time I met him, he still had a tan line around his ring finger. He carefully avoided giving the subject any thought, but seeing his daughter's resemblance to his wife prevented that from being an easy task. Initially, he seemed profoundly interesting, spouting opinions on big topics, discussing culture and society and religion with what appeared to be well-formed ideas. But the more time I spent with him, the more I noticed the same stories growing up. Tilly rarely spoke of another. And in retrospect, I only believe one story she told of her. She said her mother would spit at her if she didn't finish her meal. Memphis. She was the only person in the world. It wasn't beautiful the way most people are beautiful. Memphis. But the I couldn't help in the world stare at her. Given the chance to imagine. And she noticed as far back and asked as I can me if remember I wanted to much of it buried away in the hazy corner. And we went and drank in the fields between our houses. And the months before we were taught to read. She rested we her head on her leg and spoke about how the days before the outside the world was existed to us. Memphis told us of Memphis. She said that when I told her, she watched I the thought lightning, I loved her a few, few weeks later. Her face distorted with joy. Her, her smile broadened on us as children, flashing the gap between her teeth, front teeth. A world outside of the farms and schoolyards and the dinner tables, and the passion faded. And gardens and living room floors. She a told me world. she fancied someone else. And I wasn't Most sure if this was a impulsive lie to get a reaction. There was something so undoubtedly attractive about her. I wasn't surprised. She was there for all of us. I laughed. Yet forever inaccessible. She remained silent. We lived within her sphere. 
To make matters worse, she told me who it was that she liked. And they'd hung out a few times, to imagine was got to some high on the hill we him. used to go Mystery. to, looking out over the day. It was also to understand that she oozed confidence. I could never really know her. Her gravitational pull was down attractive. to enthusiasm. She so showed Perhaps no interest in us as people, nice. but only in her ability to share with us. I told her she was being reckless with She ran away many times, sometimes for days on end, and would always come back to share her stories. I told her again. Religious. Their neglect easily she misunderstood his respect for her sense of discovery. Not because she didn't understand, but because she didn't want what to What further hear developed my infatuation were our similarities. What sadness could befall a girl like that? From a distance, both the boys in the schoolyard and our mothers would often get us confused. for a long time after confused. we stopped seeing one another. I was never the centre of attention, unless I was mistaken to be her. Young, unset, Yet I often dementia. found myself the centre of her attention. That's what my father had heard. More than enough. He hadn't thought to immediately Memphis tell me. would not rise to people's His reasoning adoration. being that we'd broken up. She would brush it off, ignore it. Memphis my gave confusion at this revelation of his birthday meal overwhelmed any anger I could have felt towards him. Scientific intake, secret from her parents. I looked her father in she the eye. She told me she never felt as good as when she was sleeping. The was she okay? I asked before she died. Her father was a bull of a the moment man. The words left my mouth, Even I now, I to think of him, resurfaces as a burning sensation in the pit of my stomach. She wasn't herself for the final two Coming weeks, he said. Particularly, she would extended shout and swear of and abuse the nurses. Memphis noticed a faint glimmer of orange. Did you see her when she was like that? I Upon asked. arriving at her home, she discovered her parents stood watching the swing set that had once inspired the dream of so light, helpless. engulfed in flame. She wasn't herself. She used to get the wrong bus to discover new ways of tracking home. And she did know what was Memphis happening to did her, it she would boy starve she herself. Was he was two or three years above us. But the last she time told I saw us her, all what happened. How he leaned the day before against she died, her. she looked so How he held her again. and squeezed her and pushed himself in and out of her and panted he and sweat. She never became a subject to the same the evils as us. He said. Her dramas were of a different order. It hit me. Internal. Like a punch in Without the stomach. Without they were more brutal. I Without the abrupt say. punctuation forming the that. sentences and paragraphs, that was our spelling. He told out me her final lives. words. She called Tears me about a week before she went to fly, and told me he tried dream to reassure me recently. she was dead a long in the dream, time before she, she went into a charity shop with her mother and father. She was, was looking through the quiet pause. After a moment, she realized he she his had read every single again. one of them. In chronological order. And then I forgot all about Books were mapped of her childhood. Tilly. Of Memphis. Was she was remembering smile, all of those different things that had happened to her when she was reading We them. told some Tilly stories. She traced fell. along the shelf. Her teenage years. And I shook his hand as I more read and more Tilly. books to fill her hunger for knowledge and dampen the inherent smiled. distance she felt towards her peers. I smiled back. Then she got to the book that she was currently reading. This had never happened she before. She took it from the shelf. And I knew that... These Final days, making him blank. smile was a rare occurrence. She noticed something in the corner of her eye. And I realised I was to late and rushed to the station. Was offering a cup of Once tea. Once I was on the train home, her the clothes were suddenly soaked, dawned on me. Clinging onto her swollen once. skin, her eyes bloodshot, her elbows her bloodied and torn into shreds of dark gore. My bones ached. She realised that she wasn't in the room anymore. And I was struggling to her overcome my gone. tendency to overthink things. And then she things. woke up. I couldn't get her final Whatever words she became out of my head. since I last saw her, I can't shake the feeling that she was already an was echo so of that person when she came back from Memphis. I remembered something she, she had once said. Very quickly. She was formed Something I want to believe was true. Far before we became people of shape. She told me of a dream she had. I didn't she think had. I would be wrong in saying that of I have kept the aura of those days inside me. And to that and extent, I can still feel how we all felt back then. Free. Happy. In her last letter Honest. to me during my time at university, Graceful. she told me that she had bought enough books to last her lifetime. Spinning and spinning. I guess she wasn't joking. And spinning. It was cold and getting cold. I looked out over the dale and told Joshua that it was going to rain. He laughed it off, but I didn't have a winter coat. I had slept uncomfortably, so my neck ached, and I resented that he didn't care. Our aims were set on the gap in the horizon. 
Joshua's sister had told us that a cow had fallen over the waterfall. Joshua's sister was what was called anorexic. That's when someone doesn't eat as much as they're meant to because they want to be thin. I looked out for marks on her teeth when I was at his house, but Joshua said that she wouldn't make herself sick because she wanted to have nice, white shiny teeth. I felt sorry for Joshua and his sister. Their mother was uncompromisingly beautiful. She cut our hair and was subject to endless childhood fantasy. Each of the local boys felt like they had a special intimate connection with her. I think this is why Joshua's sister didn't eat as much as everyone else did. You walk too fast, Joshua said as he wiped his nose on the back of his wrist. There was a damp spot left at the end of his jumper sleeve. That day, there was a cough in my throat that would not leave, and I wondered why I'd never noticed when there was nothing wrong with me. I twisted my neck, and it made a loud cracking sound. We usually crossed the river by an old bridge, but upon arrival, we discovered that the bridge had fallen. I rolled my trousers above my knee, but my jeans stuck up well. When I got to the other side, I used my socks to dry my legs and feet and sat and waited as Joshua crossed. I cut my hands and blew on them. I had hidden a handful of macadamia nuts in my pocket. Joshua came and sat next to me in the grass by the side of the river. And we ate. I got up and threw a rock into the water and watched it vanish. I said that we had to go because it was going to rain soon. And we continued on our quest to the gap in the horizon. At the top of a hill, we stood facing away from the wind, catching our breath. Joshua pointed at something. We walked towards the black spot in the distance. It grew bigger and bigger until we saw there was a man. He was slumped in the grass with his head and his arms, making loud noises. It wasn't until we were closer that I heard, over the wind, that the odd sounds he was making were soft. I wasn't sure if I recognised him, but I was sure I must have somehow vaguely known him. When we were younger, Joshua and I were caught by an old couple that found us throwing stones at the bird's nest. They told us to stop and we didn't, and somehow the information found its way back to our parents. Everyone knows everyone. I must have known this old man. And I didn't like the idea of him sat all alone in the grass crying to himself when I knew it was going to rain soon. We stood listening and I thought for a very long time about it. Then I crouched and tried to put my arm around later. him and he sniffed to show us. I helped. When had us. My father made his money for I told him it would be all right and he said that he wanted to get a stable soon. job before having children. And after a while I, I always did. thought that was funny. Strange he looked up at me. Attention at funeral. His eyes were swollen. I was being hugged and he kissed by people I'd never met. I so told him it was too me. cold to be sat out here crying. My dress got stuck in the wood. He laughed in the pew. I offered him a macadamia like nut and he said no. I pictured myself in a coffin. I thought of asking him why he was crying. Wood, said not being why able to turn you? over or move my arms and legs. He looked down as if he'd done something wrong. My father's coffin scratched the door on the frame. He asked us what we were doing. 
I said we were going to see a dead cow, and I asked him if he wants to come. And he said, and then this woman, he doesn't want to see a dead dressed all in white. Why would I next to me? Dead cow. I shrugged. Lady in white. Began to rain, and Joshua said he recognised how hard it must be to understand what was going on. My shadow crossed over the. She told me that her husband had lost two daughters and drowned. I watched the man get into my eyes, drawn they died. As we walked away, we never she looked back as the worst thing that can happen to someone. The rain was getting worse, and the ground was becoming soft underfoot. She used to be an Luckily, we came husband to an old died. barn, and we stood in the town pool. I thought that must have been how she was able to wipe away the what tears. What do you think is in her She was said. I don't know. And then she but said, when her family drowned, she went away to an island by herself and listened, and lived in a house her great grandfather's built. I whacked the door away with the flower in my hand. It swung slowly open. It took hours and hours on a sailboat. Once together. inside, I realised I'd been there before. It was there for since 15 years. We stood in the open door like farm animals looking out, waiting for the rain to stop. Joshua wiped his nose on his sleeve. There was a lingering stink of cow poo in the rain, dripped through the roof into puddles on the floor. I looked out at the sky and played with a bit of nut that had broken in my pocket. And after a while the rain stopped. And the wind shifted and there was almost silence. All I could hear was the waterfall in the pipe. I found this home movie. An old one, no sound, covered in scratches with the colour of my mouth. My parents came married. I don't remember my parents loving each other. Well, only once. We were on holiday. I'm not sure where. I had an ear infection and was sat in the shade and my parents kissed in the swimming pool. And I remember feeling disgusted. Now I feel a warmth when I recall this moment. Many things are missing from my memory. My childhood is a blur, stripped down to its bare essentials. Playing with toy dinosaurs under the large tree in the garden. Silent family meals. My grandmother flying over from Ireland and surprising me on my fifth birthday. Fighting with my brother and moving from one house into two. My parents had a cat they named after a brand of crisps they liked when they were young. She was very old when she died, just after my parents got a divorce. The metaphor speaks for itself. In the wedding video, my parents love each other. I am in my mother's belly and my father kisses my mother. You can see my mother is embarrassed and happy that he's kissing her. I had forgotten that my parents loved each other. I found a videotape under the stairs with videos of my younger brother as a baby. I'd forgotten my first memory until I saw it again as a teenager, watching him press his face against the side of the playpen. Up until that point, my earliest memory was of walking down a long, dusty road with a white house at the end. Trees hung over the road. It seemed to be miles long, but I presume that it was childhood sense of scale warping reality. When I asked my In father, morning, he told gone. me it must have been from the holiday we went on when I was four. They vanished. There seems to be a she lot of videos of animals and dancing trees, into the forest, birds and horses, in the trees. dogs looking into the camera. The girls that appeared. I wonder what they make of all this. Of the collection and recollection of the past. They probably Nobody think it's all very silly. Story. Thinking in the so past. after a while, she stopped telling people. We weren't going in that direction. But she knew I would believe her. I imagine my cat saying to me. When I asked my uncle, the dogs think of the times they enjoyed. They will sit and wait Nobody for their owners to come home for hours on end. They'll wait with eager anticipation for a stick to be thrown or a meal to be provided. Do they think back to their favourite food? I heard recently that 80% of information that we remember is negative. This is our animal instinct. So that we learn from bad experiences and avoid allowing them to happen in the future. So what happens to all the good experiences? Why don't we learn how to replicate them instead? By this point, I honestly don't know if I remember my brother in the playpen or remember the video. 
The pictures solidify the memory, eventually replacing the moment it was meant to capture. And maybe the point of the memory isn't whether what you remember is real, but the truth it resurfaces. A dog doesn't think of past events and wonder whether they loved their owner, but they do trust the people that show them love. Do humans forget themselves because they swim in the present or because they drown in their past? I don't know. Anyway, it seems to evaporate over time anyhow. Yes, yeah, so that's so it. For some reason, this morning, I woke up thinking of a story my mother told me of when the circus came to the dale. Elephants walked through the streets, she said. People came from miles around. I didn't believe her. Well, not until I saw the old video of the parade. It took seeing it to make it true. Years later, I told her this over Christmas dinner. She told me she made the story, the story up. up. I always thought that was funny. I always thought that was funny. Then the yard turns to deep mud. Dog. Yeah, the feet sunk into the ground as we dance then turn the it off again. soil. <laughs> Bobby. The cabin well, was tiny and warm. No. We Sorry. got in and took off our clothes, hanging them above the fireplace. It's still on the She's court. On the bed. Turn it off. Drew her knees up to her the chin big red and wrapped button. her arms around me. I said that I loved the way the light looked on the bare wooden floorboards, the way it climbed the curtains. She smiled. The wind whispered outside the windows. When I was very young, we had the same set meal for every day of the week. Friday was my favourite day. One day, she was called Emily. Fish and chips and no school the following morning. The children in the playground gave Because her of my mother and father's jobs, they discovered I had to stay in the after-school club that they held and in the school And we could feel the hall. house become emptier in her mother's absence. And that was my first year, and I didn't like the other school Her footsteps children. suddenly began to echo through the corridors. Once I was picked up, she tried to remember I'd go home, if they always and had. I'd have dinner and get sent straight to bed. She opened the wardrobe in her parents' room. We moved out into and a new house, and my youthful determination for independence up. meant that I that these were chose to have a tiny room to myself there. rather than share a far alive. larger room with my brother. The following day, she discovered that her father it used to be a little girl's bedroom before the her family died. But Bambi continued. 
The short days of winter brought dusk well before I'd finished my dinner. The long summer nights meant that the sun would set far after I fell asleep. She despised all things ever. But on a good day, this was the last time I would lie in bed and gaze at the patterns cast on my walls. She was blind to the eye. The light painting my rooms in oranges. One or evening, yellow, whilst watching television, she noticed that her mother's favourite painting, with the silly Saturday mornings, I would attempt to will myself the awake. She asked this her father where it worked. Was. There was a short, but on the days it did, I would go to my window sill. Done something wrong. On the floor, it thought passed creak. through her mind. If you really love someone, I listened as the rest you of the house breathed out its silence. No she was one was ever any the wiser to my activities. Bambi ran to the graveyard. Awakening my brother would she have been catastrophic. She was concentrating hard on staying He took great delight angry. in disrupting anything I did. She tried to imagine that her father didn't exist. And I would have to climb onto that a chair to get up to the windowsill. Bambi watched as the cold night's air Once threw up, the blossom and the dance. At an odd angle. Suddenly, she felt very alone. The garage and the trees she obstructing my view of the horizon. Bambi was annoyed at herself for feeling relieved. She don't have frown and waited for him to come and stand next to her. They stood in silence for a short while. Would you be okay if we were to walk home now? He asked. She noticed that he had spoken in the future tense. Yes, Bambi said. She noticed the years of love that had worn themselves into his cheeks. He smiled for the first time since his wife had passed. Blossom brushed past them, catching in the air. She recalled something her mother had told her a long time before, in the course of an insignificant conversation. Bambi joined her father in smiling. On the walk home, she danced like the child she no longer was. It's a fine thing to feel happiness. I met Katie on the weeping willow by the river. I'd just come back from my first time at university and was readjusting to the new family dynamic. She was getting high and I was getting drunk. She smiled as I told her about the sun setting in my bedroom. And I was afraid of how much I looked at. We would meet and drink and smoke and walk to the shop together every day. And the sun might go and the windows of houses and things. And we cooked it on the other side of the We met each other's family. So now I was peaceful in her life and the truth. And then the Christmas break was on. Now I'm back to university. I got wrapped up in work. That night in the cabin was the first time we'd seen each other for almost a year. She'd moved to one city. I'd moved to another. We'd both grown up and grown apart. My back was warmed by the stage behind me. And as we began to kiss, I closed my eyes and we were getting a breath. People think it's short. Regular. Like it. 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 As I walked towards the bus stop, I watched my shadow stretched out before me in the sunlight. I smiled and knew, and this is 
is what it's like. It's beautiful. been writing these stories so they're not forgotten. I had a dream last night that reminded me of something I did when I was about 15. I wonder where the memory has existed since I last thought of it. It was the 9th of October and I remember that because it was the day after my mother's birthday and my friend Samuel asked me to go on a walk with him. I remember taking great delight in wearing my brand new coat. Samuel was preoccupied with two white figures dancing on the horizon. He filmed in the months them on an between old Memphis Camry leaving for university and coming back for Christmas, her father left. Did I mention he was that a man we who tended to dislike like a chain one of this been a lot of change recently? Well, I have now. He was done raising we her, so he was done with me. Go out and take photos or the smell film of alcohol was only a rumor, but I could tell by a swagger who was blind drunk. I wonder if he hid his head on the lamp as he often somewhere. does when he's drunk and he grew angry. On an old reel of film. I always thought this was tape. funny. Or hard dry. What are you laughing at? He asked. Then it was all screaming. Somebody and asked me whether I thought it was okay to film strangers without asking. He tapped the dog on his asking. favorite rug into the back of the truck and left. He recalled the old idea that taking a photo it was cold of and getting colder. Also captures a Soft bit of their drifting down out of the blackness. I wiped my nose on I my sleeve after having acting for him. I could feel the house becoming it's empty in his absence. People snap into my sat and counted them when they know they're staying on the wooden table, the worn spines of the books. There's something graceful the about the cliche. I lay on the sofa. As though in trying to present yourself while, honestly, you become as much like others I sat as possible. Up fear that he might return. My bones this is ache. why I think people are often most beautiful in the my day tendency to overthink things, and suddenly I felt very alone. I, I wonder if people have changed how they act in front of the camera members. since they've become more common. The new distance between us are brought and whether our memory of that moment she wrote now to me often in those was different to then. She said that she felt submerged and invisible I in the crowds of people. People used to remember the, the photograph being taken as she much as the image was like itself. a beehive or an ant's nest. The now, work was moving there are so from many one place to another, carrying so much more than any picture should carry said she could no longer see the stars. If we see an image of ourselves and we don't remember She told me she was writing a series of short stories about her life. Did it really happen to her? And asked if it would be okay if she wrote about the really crying man. I replied the fiery the outline of, of twilight shone around book, her silhouette, finished. diffusing and Of course shirt. you can use the story of the crying man I put We passed right there, the delicate know. white blossoms. I asked her if she Samuel could bring back home a pomegranate and a papaya. It had the quality of my father by letter. Yet it was there to give her the news for my eyes. And yet too beautiful to I write to you from a train heading south, she put. Whilst but at home, the reason I, I am telling you this story is that of this moment. until I dreamt of them last I night, of my I had forgotten all about the figures in white, dancing on riding up into the sunset, but since leaving, when we went and got the role of film to write about his home, we couldn't remember I why he had filmed my room so many empty fields. I found a copy of Jude the Obscure you gave to me. It got me in to my thinking. Dream, we accept what we are presented with without question. We do I knew not that like eventually, to be when he was grown, I would tell him the whole story from my we perspective until we can't remember whether it and was true or false. And he would appreciate all I had been through. And I would be she forgiven. She called me in floods of tears when she finished Jude the Obscure. It didn't occur to I me. I apologise for recommending the book. Me. She blamed Thomas Hardy. 
but I don't think we said that when we were watching at the sound of her voice. Maybe we did. She told me of university, the mixed characters. She said Maybe she my mind is changing a hard truth into something food. comfortable to recall. I told her to be on the evening train on the 23rd. I haven't spoken to Sam get a lift to the house from Paul. I suppose that's how you know you're getting on. She asked me why he was going to give her a lift, and I smiled to avoid the question. Then I remembered Last I heard, he fell in love with the young conversation. And now they live in Germany. The night before no, no, Christmas no, no, Eve, Paul's car pulled up on the driveway. I hear they make a living from I offered him a cup of tea. He and in their spare time, away. he's still making films Although while she was plays in small time bars. Although it was only a short time since I'd last seen in Memphis was not as she had that been. That was a lie. Yet neither I was don't she know why I lied. I guess, I wonder if it was maybe myself rather than her that had changed. Can make you take a step outside of yourself. There seemed to be an increased delicacy to her already delicate features. It can make us accidentally or deliberately reveal our feelings, was, which, until expressed, I could feel a hesitation to in our imagination. Itself in her. Don't you think I it's funny how she was doing? Stories we feel the need to differentiate time. between fiction she shook her and non-fiction perceptively. When it comes to our own story, I persuaded myself we don't long for the same sense of categorization. I attempted an awkward conversation about it. When we tell stories, we set ourselves in a relationship with much interest. every other story we've told. It have been of much annoyance to her. And we father. judge others based on their I did stories. not expect her to miss him. Forge friendships. I put my arms up. around her. She looked up and smiled a huge smile that took To be perfectly honest, and, to and to risk losing my credibility in the final five minutes so of, of this film. Or maybe I had. These stories aren't entirely Perhaps accurate. One of the many missing details they didn't begin the as films, of my mind. and none of them have had the same sense of exposure in the they past. Do here. We sat on the we lawn and told the names stories. of the stars overhead that had never the energy to Make them more representative or accessible and we us, we or inspiring. We laughed as we was going to be like this year. Or sometimes we choose to tell different From stories. From the fire, it turned to mush in our rucksacks, we so ourselves. we ate beetroot and kale. But and we I seem to forget that we are just telling our story. For the first time since I could remember, I look forward to the coming day. Kumalan <laughs>
Okay. 